What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast, The Sesh. Uh, Rob is unfortunately not here. He just uh, opened up his business over there in Harlingen. It's the uh, House Club Poker Room. Uh, if you want to go and check it out this weekend, uh, there's going to be some tournaments and all that stuff and all the good stuff that legal poker does in the Rio Grande Valley. And it's the only one in Harlingen. So shout out to Rob. On today's podcast, we have a very special guest and uh, something's going on this weekend. But please, Tanya, uh, introduce yourself. Tell us what's going Tanya on. Hi, I'm Tanya Viveros. And yes, you are correct, Josh. We have an art exhibit in the Phoenix Gallery. And you're being hosted by so many artists that are playing a big role in the community from installation to authentic artwork, lots of color. There's a fashion show also. There's so much uh, networking happening in the Rio Grande Valley. And I think as artists and as community, you know, representatives, we need to be informing the community of what's happening. Let me ask you this, uh, art. I had never fallen in love with art more than I did when I started making the documentary a few years, a couple of years ago. And uh, I kind of just like was always in the music scene and, and that's a different type of art. Oh, yeah. But when I started seeing, like, appreciating people's art, like, when you actually know the person and you see what they've done with the art piece, that takes it to a whole different level. And I, I've never experienced that before until, like, two years ago when I started getting introduced into the space. The Phoenix Gallery is a pretty mm -hmm. badass place. <laughs> Can you kind of tee it up, like, what visually people see? Like, I've done them on Instagram stories before, yes. but when you get there, it's quite the scene. Yes, I love going in there. Uh, first of all, I mean, it's in downtown. I'm not uh, expecting a gallery to be in downtown, you know. So once you get there and you just climb those stairs, like you're already, it, mentally you're already thinking, okay, I'm leaving the natural space. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving whatever's out there and you're climbing up the stairs. The minute you open up that glass door, you're just in a whole new world. It's like a little hole in the wall. It, it's a little it, gem. It, yes, it literally is. When I uh, met Uriel, the gallery manager, and I saw it, I was like, wow, I can definitely live here for the rest of my existence. Yeah. Because it is so authentic, it is vintage, it has something that you don't find in the Rio Grande Valley, so yeah. common. It's usually a gallery space. I'm an academic uh, artist, right? And it's a very formal setting. You have a large space, artwork in the walls, right? Specific measurement, uh, all this space in the center. This is very different. These are rooms and gallery works everywhere, but the, the quality of the work is just really neat because you're not expecting that in that area of McAllen mm -hmm. because, you know, it's more uh, laid back. Yeah. But it's just beautiful, and it's, I highly recommend for people to go and visit. Yeah, they just need to check it out so they can be in the, in the area. And it, it, Definitely. It obviously inspires people. Like, when you walk in, you see stuff, you smell stuff. It's, it's the whole experience, I think, that that's, that place is very special for. Um, had there been a bunch of art shows before this? Yes, we've had art shows there in the Phoenix Gallery previous, you know, to this show that's happening this Friday from six and above, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've had uh, in previous months, but of course through COVID things slowed down a little, but we had the last one, I think it was last three months ago, about three, four months ago, but they're very consistent with their art shows. It's yeah. something that I always look forward to Something's always happening. Uh, there's always... Uh, an another thing I want to highlight about this specific uh, gallery is that they network with local uh, either juice companies or catering. So you have Cater by España. You have juice from Juicy Fruits. So you mm -hmm. have people that from here, from the valley. It's not just... They're keeping it local. Yes, and yeah. that's beautiful. Supporting local artists, local people, not just going into a big uh, store and buying all this merchandise and can hear, hear the um, hors d'oeuvres, okay, eat up. It's something that you're connecting businesses with businesses. Yeah, and I think it's a very interesting thing, especially from, uh, for me, like as an entrepreneur or an investor or something like that, investing in these pieces is kind of a cool thing because they're local talent that, that you kind of know the person. Like that's, that's best, like I just got his painting or something like that. Can you kind of touch on the level of uh, artistry that's there? Yes, uh, one of the things about that specific gallery is that these are artists that are not only full-time artists, they dedicate so much time, and they're constantly contributing to the, the community, and they make authentic work based on a, their specific story, their specific taste, 
And when you buy things from us, we're still alive. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty about it. I was like, please support live artists because yeah. the ones that are dead, somebody <laughs> they don't need out the money. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, the, somebody has their money. They don't. <laughs> They're far gone. So that that's the neat thing about it's that we're there to to give back, and you can always come back and say, hey, I need another piece. I need another, you know, forty by eighty. Uh, to authentic work that is done by a live artist. It's yeah. always something to consider. Yeah, it's because it becomes like a custom piece at that mm -hmm. point. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, how many artists are going to be there? We're talking about 10 artists plus because wow. you have diversity as well, right? Mm -hmm. There's a, I've always said, there's no competition in art because everybody has a specific audience. Not everybody's going to love what I do. Not everybody's going to like what the other artist is doing. We all have, we all draw people and their energy draws us different. Yeah. So it's always support. Yeah, we have about 10 artists that are going to be showcasing their work. And your art is considered what? <laughs> Mixed media. <laughs> Mixed media, okay. Kind of explain what that <laughs> is. Yes, I love talking about my process because when I started, I wasn't thinking, oh, artists, right? I'm thinking graphic design, business. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I could not sit more than 30 minutes in a chair before going crazy. And I said, no, 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 this is, this is not what I want to do the rest of my life. I like computers, I like technology, but it's taking, like I said a while ago, it's taking away so much energy. And this is not something, I don't want to look like I'm 80 and I'm just 20. No, no, no. So one of the things that I discovered was welding. So in uh, UTPA at that time, I found the studio, and I remember, I'll never forget, going in there and, and just looking at so much mess. But it was a beautiful mess. Mm -hmm. You had busts, you had uh, sculptures of a horse, of a human body, everything, machinery, and I, it was just Disney World for me. <laughs> and I said, wow, because I come from the low-income side, that Hispanic side, so where you learn how to do everything. Yeah. Everything. There's no money to pay for anybody. You figure it out. Yeah, you if you, figure it out. Yeah, if you break it, you fix it. <laughs> so when I went in there, I was like, this is my world. Like, this is my realm. So I started welding. I started making sculptures. I started uh, working with casting as well, bronze casting. Uh, then I went into the realm of jewelry, metal smithing. I started, you know, forging all of my leaves. So little by little, taking nature. And this is simultaneously while you are an educator? Uh, no. Okay. Became an, an educator, I guess, a year later within that time. Oh, okay, gotcha. But still, you know, making work, constantly, constantly making, getting that bachelor's, right? Yeah. Once I got that bachelor's, that's when I became an educator. And then after that, master's, MFA, right back to back. Wow. And that's intense work. Those of you that don't know, MFA is so much. <laughs> it's learn how to do everything, showcase an artwork, and then... God bless you and hope you make it. Go, <laughs> go to the world. <laughs> yes, go out there. And it is it's very challenging. So making so much, constant, 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 right? And then I discovered the medium that you all have here in the Rio Grande Valley, which is the palm trees, the palm tree leaves. So currently, most of my work is referencing that, the palm tree leaves and debris, taking something that is dead and making it look alive. Interesting. Okay. That's, it's, it's, it's. Very complex how my brain worked, as in metal industry, plasma cutter, yes, uh, looking like I was homeless all the time because I'm constantly working with metal. <laughs> and, and then now with this very sensitive, fragile work. Yeah. That is just, honest, it's dead. You have to be huh. careful. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, how often do you practice creativity? And the, the reason I ask this is because... Uh, I think like for the 48 hour film race that we, that we did, uh, we didn't get nominated for anything, but the, the sheer point of practicing our art, getting better at it, sharpening our tools. I think that's such something that's it's such a monumental thing for people to keep doing and doing and doing, get creative, get creative all the time. Because I believe that the more you're creative, the creativity comes to you. Do you feel in the same way? I completely say amen 100%. <laughs> uh, I, I state all the time that I, I'm very diverse. I'm constantly working. I think that keeps me away from, from trouble, right? I'm always like, if it wasn't for art, I would be a terrorist. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> right? I think every artist. And at the end of the day, I work all the time. And that's one of the things that I was uh, mentioning uh, earlier on is that I am a educator, high school educator for PSJ North for my Raiders, right? I am a South Texas College professor for 
for my Jaguar. So I'm constantly educating that community and I'm an artist, 100%. So I come home, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, even on conference time, I'm sketching, I'm always generating ideas of what I'm gonna do. Though I think now, most of my work comes when I'm around the community. Okay. I was at Mexclan. Mm -hmm. I was there every day. I talked to every single vendor. I fell in love more and more uh, of my dear Mexico than ever before. And commuting with them, thinking of ideas, I can do that embroidery, I can do that color, I can do this. Because again, going back to where I come from, poverty, there is no such thing as culture. It's you eat and sleep, that's it. You know, don't, and if there's no light, figure it out, right? Yeah. So there's no culture that when you come from poverty, there's no education in, in embroidery. There's where we come from, right? I'm learning that as a, I guess as an educator, as a community uh, representative, because I get to actually be and have time yeah. for these people. So you get to meet the people so, that are part yeah. of the community. Yeah. Humble people. Irving Cano. I mean, he honestly, they asked me this question this week. Who is the artist you admire? And I can name, you know, Frida Kahlo, amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Mexican artist. But 100% Irving Cano. If you were able to see his work in Mexclan, it, it was fantastic. Awe inspiring. Yes, and then they took him on to Quinta Mazatlan. Wow. Somebody that grew up in the streets in Mexico. That's awesome. To being an iconic. People are asking. To, I mean, he's gotten so many metal plates. Wow. I was like, sir, you can make a whole <laughs> Iron Man sculpture with that. <laughs> but these are the people that I feed off from. Yeah. Inspire from them. I go to a market event, constantly looking, okay, Constantly, my brain is constantly sketching. So I am. I start building. I start making work here and then there, and then put it all together. Hmm. Interesting. So I believe just like you guys. You guys are out there drinking coffee. You're thinking of a new yeah, project. All like, the time. We never stop. Yeah, we don't stop. So is that a bad thing? It's. It, I don't think it's. Again, going back, <laughs> it's keeping us sane. <laughs> keeping us sane. <laughs> it's. It, we're being a blessing to the community because we are creators. We are uh, honestly a huge mechanism. You can either make us or break us. Yeah. And that's who we are. We create. And, and without us, this I mean, it was seen in COVID. Without us, yeah. the world is blue. Yeah. That's it. We're the ones that make things happen. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful to be able to be blessed with that creativity. And not everybody's blessed with it. I completely, I completely agree with you. Uh, I used to believe that anybody can be like an entrepreneur or an a but anybody can do anything. That's not the case. It's, mm -mm. Uh, it's really not the case. And I, I kind of had to like, oh shit, man. Like I was so wrong with saying that in the beginning, but oh, yeah. it, it takes a lot of work to do what you want to do in life. Like if you want to go and blaze your own trail, like that's yeah. just hard. Yep. Like for yeah. everybody, everybody that makes it look easy, it's still fucking hard. I, I love when students tell me, uh, Miss, college is not for me. I'm going to go out there. And when they say I'm going to go out there, I'm just like, look, gorgeous honey thing. Let me tell you, <laughs> this college student, which I was a college student, we are told what to do, mm -hmm. which makes life a little easier. Go do this, go do that. Do an assignment, a project, create this. I mean, we're told what to do, which makes sense, right? Yeah. We obey. You, nobody's gonna tell you what to do. You figure it out. You're gonna fall flat on your face. You're gonna cry. You're gonna get up. You're gonna say, oh crap, I haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah. And that's okay. It's harder for you. Just know that it's not like, oh, it's easy. I'm gonna take the easy route. No, you're taking the more challenge because now you have to discover yourself. Yeah. And that's, that's something that's interesting. I was like, tell me how it goes. <laughs> well, that's not to say that it can't happen because no, I think yeah. for a lot of people, like when they start new ventures, like for a few of my friends that just started new ventures, like, they're like, oh, I haven't made any sales. Like, I haven't made a sale like in five years, dude. Like, you just keep on grinding yeah. and grinding until it happens. Like, those are the, that's at that point where you have an event and yeah. this, you don't sell anything and you're demoralized. Like, shit, is this really what I should be doing? Like, oh, that, yeah. that question goes into a lot of people's minds. It's like, how do, you, how do you deal with stuff like that? Or how do you tell people, like, just keep going? I mean... I exactly use others. Just keep on swimming. That's it. There's no right or wrong way. Uh, don't compare yourself to others because that's the worst thing you can do. I know we do it as a human beings. It's like, oh, so-and-so is going that far. So-and-so is doing this. Going mm -hmm. back to like that advice that I give them, it's don't, it's college is not a good or a bad thing. Being self-employed is not good. It's, is it your thing? Right. Is it your thing? Never mind if it's anybody's thing. 
but just keep on going. And you know what? At the end of the day, we will all reach a point where we're going to look back and say, oh, this worked out and that definitely didn't work out. Mm -hmm. But it's just keep on doing this. What you're doing. If what you're doing is giving you a good uh, outcome, even if it's small, keep on going and going. Because if you stop, then you're never going to know. Yeah. So it's just looking and surrounding yourself by people that are going to inspire you. I and said, sometimes yeah. finding that community is pretty hard. It's very challenging, especially in the art world. And, and you know that because yeah. we're all in the art world, in that creative space mm -hmm. where it's hard to, to say, hey, let me give you an advice or let me give you a tip without somebody giving you, know, giving you that feedback, that criticism. Yeah, even the humility of taking oh the criticism God. is like, oh, oh yes. I already did it, bro. Oh, <laughs> yes. I was recently talking to a uh, manager, boss, of a huge perfume company and I was showcasing my designs. Again, this is not an artist. This is not anything. Mm -hmm. And accepting a criticism from somebody that has never picked up a pencil. Yeah. It's very difficult, but I always had to take it back. Go back to my grad school times. Tanya, this is not, you know, they're just giving you a constructive criticism. Go out there and make it better. Yeah. Going back to the ego, go and prove them wrong. Yeah. It's always my thing is like, <laughs> don't ever tell me I am five two but sometimes I feel like I'm four eight, <laughs> literally. And you tell me, don't climb that tree. I'm gonna climb You're that gonna tree. Climb it. like, I mean, why? Because challenge has always. It's. I was raised around boys. Yeah. It, it's a thing. Only girl, four boys, only thing. Like it's in my mind. It's do it. Yeah. I I always have the uh, the the perception of competition is a good thing, even though like it, you don't want to per se say it like yeah i'm gonna compete with you like competition is a good thing i think yeah. it really shows like the the level of skills that that person can bring within that community and it just makes everybody better like you always want to see your competitors you don't want to compete against somebody that's oh yeah not up to your, or to your level or anything like that like you want to compete with yeah. the people that are the best in that industry yeah. and i think everybody should go through that i agree with you because you don't know your full potential until you challenge that potential and you say, you know what, I'm going to start and I'm going to end. And if, and if the worst thing that can happen within that competition is that I grew, yeah. that I got better. Yeah. Nobody loses. Yeah, there's a, a theory of, a, a, I guess, a winner and a loser. Sure. But in the end, you grew and you realize, hey, this is how good I am. Or, oh, guess what? I suck. I need to get better. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just reality, Let's right? Let's know where you are in, <laughs> in that industry. Uh, let me ask you... Um, are there like rock stars in the in the artist uh, space right now and in, in specifically in this area? Rock stars? Like the people are like, oh, there's that guy or there's that girl that's walking through. Like, is there the people that like chat? Like, oh, look at I look think at that guy. they are. I mean, I think that celebrity, you mean that? Yeah, that like celebrity, the celebrity, celebrity type vibe. Of thing. I think they are. And I see, I see it. Like, I see it. Why, when you're involved around the community, you start seeing who's who. Mm -hmm. When you go to these meetings, to either board meetings in here in McAllen, uh, Edinburgh, which my hometown, you start, okay, that's so-and-so, that's, and you see it, and you automatically, uh, even with artists themselves, it's like, oh, that's so-and-so. You know, I mean, my, I love, I always reference, yes, uh, Uriel all the time. I always re reference pop culture. Mm -hmm. I love them because they, they represent, yeah. you know, a lot of where we come from. So it's like, oh, that's pop culture. It's like, yes, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> it's him at three in the morning spray painting. And yeah. please don't call the cops on him. <laughs> He's there doing a good deed. Well, interesting enough, uh, I went to with uh, Uriel to Houston and we met his buddy Colby. And I got to film a, uh, he was doing wheat pasting on the third ward in Houston. Oh, wow. And I've never gotten to take part of like, I guess, art performance is it, what it mm -hmm. would be it's called. performing arts. Yeah. Uh, performing arts. And, and I never got to experience that. And the first time I experienced it was in the slums of Houston while cops were passing around and like it was a lot of homeless people around I was like oh it's kind of a little sketch here yeah. but it was the most raw thing that I've ever got to yeah. experience because you're kind of looking over your shoulder but you're also looking at what's going on you're filming and it's, it's, it's there's so many senses the real deal yes right? the real deal <laughs> that's that's a true true I guess you were when there is a ceramicist and that ceramicist is creating that piece, right? Mm -hmm. They're dirty, but they're on the zone. Yeah. That's exactly what you guys were experiencing. Yeah. It's, 
That's it. It's pretty cool. It's not going to get any better than this. <laughs> no. This is it. And that's yeah. fun. Yeah. And I got to document the whole thing too. It's that's cool. It's beautiful. Like, it's awesome. It's You're cool. very blessed. Yes. Yes. I really am. <laughs> like opportunities like that, they don't come up very often. I think uh, yesterday also, uh, I was hanging out with Uriel and uh, he was actually doing a part for the documentary that we're, we're filming where he was uh, spray painting over a Bansky. And it was, uh, it's, it was like that for me, taking that in, not being from the world, not being familiar with the artistry at that level, to me, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm filming something badass, but for a lot of people that are going to be watching it, it's like, oh, shit, like, what is that guy doing to that yeah. art piece? What do you think about what he does? I think it's brave. And like I mentioned to you, uh, looking him up and it's like, okay, what's going on? Uh, why do I see, you know, artists? Yeah, I mean, we have that that rebellious in us mm -hmm. and that's what really marks us i mean there's a fine line within you know uh going in and creating a crime versus you're you're creating art for art's sake right yeah. uh it's it's him i can't do what he does because that's not me uh my my style is completely different if i'm gonna make a statement it's literally wear on very very bright clothing and walk in 10th street and you will see me because you will see me <laughs> big old sombrero uh i create attention with how i dress and but that's just me right yeah. uh now if i spray paint that's going to be something else because i have to be holding on to my hat the spray and that's too much it's like no 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 but i i admire people like that because it's it's very courageous and i remember uh speaking to him yesterday telling me hey by the way your art made an impression yesterday. I was like, it did. It fell off. I was like, great. <laughs> During a documentary, I was like, oh, exactly what I wanted. It was supposed to fall on your head, did it? <laughs> it was close. It was close. It was close. I was like, oh, shoot. Uh, but no, no big deal. But yeah, no, it's fun to see that there's artists that still exist within that realm. Because like I mentioned earlier, I'm an academic artist. Mm -hmm. Academic artist. And I'm also, you know, I guess art, an artist, artist 100%. Academic artists, very formal. There's a okay. specific format, right? You create the piece, and if you're gonna spray paint, you're gonna spray paint with either a wall or a canvas. So it falls Everything. into certain parameters. Oh yes, it's a box. Why? Because I come from the academia, right? I have a, a PhD slash MFA in the arts, so you are taught mm -hmm. all this. Now, when I meet Uriel, when I meet the gallery, I'm like, wow, this will never be approved by glass. <laughs> what is it, glass tire at all, right? Because there's so much. It's, let me go through the checklist. It's like, mm, there's literally not even a check on that thing. Wow. Because I did not know there was such a difference. There's a huge difference. Wow. And you have to have a specific layout. All the canvases, all the paintings have to be a specific level. There's, there's a formality. Hmm. Just like you were talking uh, to me earlier about the filming that's right. There is specific thing. It's exactly yeah. like that. Wow, okay. So for you to step in and get your work accepted in a formal gallery, that takes a lot. Yeah. A I, lot. I, I did not even think a about lot. that. You're right. You can take your book. You can take your website. You can take whatever. You can take a whole crew. And they're going to still consider, oh, okay. We'll consider you. That's wow. why major artists, huge artists, just like Uriel, what he does, started doing. Wow. And they see a gallery that is so formal and they're taking out sculptures. While this is happening, they're shoving in theirs without permission. Hmm. Interesting. And everybody's saying, oh, that's a new art show. No, he actually broke in and displayed his work. <laughs> and guess what? Wow. Again, looking at how far you're willing to go to let people know who you are. Right. And that's okay. We all do it. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are like, well, it's, what's, far, what's too far? What's we too all far? do it. We all do it. Yeah. But artists make it happen. Interesting. And that's what he does. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's an interesting character. Um, let me ask you this now. I, I see a lot of art, a lot of, of people that are trying to build brands on mm -hmm. social media. Uh, what do you see that artists can do more of? Like, for example, like marketing themselves. I think a lot of, not only entrepreneurs don't do it. I can yeah. imagine that people that want to get into branding or trying to brand themselves don't know how to do it. How do artists, how, what have you seen artists do that work? We tend to either break the law, <laughs> right? And then remember your face. It's all about networking. You can have the best website, the best business cards you can think of. If you're not out there and they're not seeing your face, 
they're not seeing your brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're a huge corporation, and I mean, you don't really need that. But at the end of the day, when your face is connected to an artwork, that is branding. Yeah. That's it. That's okay. literally it. Because I always say, uh, I have my, my company, right? My small company, Eden in Design. I love that name. I, I mean, I came up and I thought, you know, generally, what does, what is the, the title, how does it define me, right. Eden in Design? Because I always go back to the Garden of Eden, that, that beautiful space that we screwed up and we lost, right? Those that believe. And at the end of the day, I spent so much time with that, right, with creating that name. And all I say is, I am the artist, Tanya Viveros. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so it, people know me as Tanya Viveros. Right. That's it. Artist, Tanya Viveros. Tanya Viveros, all the time. Uh, and, and, and you have other artists that, yeah, this is the artist, but this is the name, mm -hmm. right? And it, it works either way. It's just connecting a face with the product. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, for, for myself, I found that going through my old company, Alamo Digital Agency, it was kind of, it was always me. Like I, I'm the one that was filming. I'm the one that was creating the content. So at the end of the day, I was like, well, why would I just give the company the name when I can be like the brand and wherever I go, I'll be able to take the brand. Yeah. Like you are the brand. So I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Taking your face, shaking hands, talking to people. I think that's the one thing that people don't have is, is a lot of, um, networking type of experience where they'll go up and actually talk it's there's introverts there's extroverts i get it it's fine but i think introverts kind of have to have that extrovert mentality yeah. just to go and do it like i get exhausted when i talk to a lot of people in, in oh, big groups me too. like that stuff <laughs> it, like it takes all my energy but i know i have to do it like i i get like i have to be part of that community and interact that way they know who i am and i tell people all the time sometimes you just have to show face like that's all you have to do that's literally it yeah uh, I've been doing this for, you know, showing my face to the community as many events as possible. I already have a year and it's been working. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, I've met so many people from all over the Rio Grande Valley, from San Antonio, from Corpus. And it's all about, they remember my name. Yeah. They remember my face. Even yesterday, as I was in one of the mixers, I mentioned your name, and they're like, oh, yeah, we know. So, so, so. It wasn't, I never mentioned the company's name, obviously, because I didn't know the company's name, but it's like, oh, Josh, oh, yes, we've known. And then we're talking about big people with heavy titles because they represent McAllen. Yeah. So just to know that they know your name, that's amazing. And, and name is so important. Yeah, it really is. And I think, I think for a lot of people, they need to understand that. I've been doing this for like five years. It's like, not like oh, I just did it for a month or something like everybody knows the name is. I've been yeah. working on my social media for like the past five years and wow. slowly it's starting to come along. And I think that's what a lot of people don't do is like they just don't start. Like they, they yeah. need to start and then just get out there. I think, what is it about like posting pictures of yourself that people oh, are so like, no. Yes. You know what? I Go for it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get focused. Yes, here. that's okay. No, I, I break that rule. I take pictures of myself all the time. Why? Because you live in a society, me, you know, that growing up, Rio Grande Valley, uh, Mexicana, 100%, in a Hispanic community, Hispanic parents, everything, right? And they're constantly, and it's not that they do it because they hate you. I hope not. If they do, please go out there and, and find help. <laughs> but it's like, oh, you're too short. Oh, you're too tall. Oh, you're too fat. You're too skinny. Your nose looks weird. I mean, constant picking, picking. And then through that stage of just constantly being in the studio, 24, I was in the studio for many years, constantly making work, right? Working with academic, academic. And then I get out and I'm like, done. Okay. And then I start appreciating myself appreciating me and then I start supporting vendors I start supporting artists I'm wearing clothing that honestly symbolizes Oaxaca Puebla our markets I'm like huh I need to tag them I need it so you start with that let me tag so and so let me tag uh tag uh backdoor uh modern vintage let me tag and then you start tagging people to represent hey this is what the, these are the products they have so I am constantly constantly taking taking pictures why it's a documentary of your life. Of your life. Yeah. Literally, if I go back, I'm like, wow, I'm aging too fast. Tone <laughs> it down, lady. And it's, it's, you, you get to see the process. And the process. Doesn't, isn't that one of the things that you have to do when you are beginning to tone your body? Yes. 
Well, I mean, I have I have uh, pictures that nobody will probably ever see <laughs> in this lifetime. They're hidden away in, in a Google Drive somewhere. But uh, I think it's a very important thing is like for you to be able to track progress. That's like the most important thing is like, how are you ever going to know where you, you end or right? where, where you came from, where you start is like if you don't yeah. document the whole journey. And I got really lucky because like with the fitness stuff that we're doing now, mm -hmm. We started and I documented it from day one. I didn't think I was going to be there six months later. So I was wow. like, uh, I'm still documenting it, but nice. I can see, I can see. The, okay. So let me, let me kind of put this in perspective uh -huh. for a lot of people. Entrepreneurship is fucking hard. Oh. Like it's one of the hardest things I've yeah. ever had to do. It's like some days are the best days. And then like the next hour is like, all right, sorry, dude, this whole thing is burning down. <laughs> so it, it takes a long time to get very good at your skill. Yeah. And I found that for although fitness, I came from 250 pounds. Now I'm at 190. Coming from that in relatively short amount of time and then slowly starting to build muscle at the same time, like I saw the results in i guess uh, in in a short amount of time right it's a short amount mm -hmm. of time but it's a long ass time oh yeah <laughs> uh, and i get why people fall off the wagon like they just don't want to do it because yeah. it takes forever to get the results but i started seeing the results and i was like okay i kind of like this now <laughs> so i kind of implemented the same thing as an entrepreneur into now working i was like i want to do it as efficiently as possible so i can get it the results at the fastest amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of people learn when they do these skill sets and they have a little bit of success. Yeah. You learn a process. I think just the process that you go through, it can be brought into the next venture and then to the next venture. Yeah. And you just learn how to do it quicker and quicker and kind of you fail faster if yeah. you will. But I think people need to go through that to learn that process. And I think once you achieve that, it kind of just, you can take it anywhere. Yeah. I think it's the coolest thing in the world. You can apply that to everything in life every principle anything you're doing if you are consistent and you're taking imagery images right of even the way you feel yeah literally it's there it's like oh i feel like crap today we'll take a picture just remind yourself that yesterday you felt like garbage now you feel better mm -hmm. i mean every picture that i take there's days that i'm like wow i am tired <laughs> or there's days like how did i even survive that you know i went through seven events on one slot Damn. and that's that's a lot that's a lot so document document your progress just like you document your kids I, I mean i used to document my kids all the time right then i was like mom stop taking pills like okay you're in the stop you're in the, the minute they tell you no more pictures you're like wait you're growing up yep. it's going on right yep. but no it's like okay well then that's fine then all the cameras on me then <laughs> but it is important that you document and that you're consistent and persistent to see that progress as an artist as as, you know, as I, anything yeah. as anything yeah, I think I think what a lot of people fail or not fail. I think what they, they think is like, well, nobody cares. Like, why does anybody care that I'm posting this? They and do. that goes through my head all the time. No, like, and oh, let me stop you there and go just like I go in the road, a 60 and then, oh, my stop. <laughs> you know, everybody <laughs> comes forward. I don't I don't even know how many people, but it's been more than 10. I can tell you that off the bat that tell me, OK, you're pictures or the way you dress or what you say and i'm not somebody that's very philosophical i'm mm -hmm. going to tell you what i'm going to tell you i'm either i'm going to make you cry or laugh there's literally like no in between, <laughs> no between. yeah <laughs> literally i'm very straightforward so so many women out there that say i mean you inspire me you inspire me for this wow you don't know what you're doing until somebody out there tells you because you said this or because you dress like that you motivated me or reminded me of but you don't know that yeah. you you won't till later on you just keep on doing that and if it bothers you're gonna have that audience that oh she hates the she role, i roll my eyes at my own post sometimes so i was <laughs> like dude what <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, me too i'm just like okay that's even when i don't feel you know that whatever glamorous or working uh, it doesn't matter i'm just yeah. just post because you never know and I promise you so many, you're impacting a lot of people with what you're doing, especially in the Rio Grande Valley. Let me ask you this, I, uh, and I feel, I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but for women, it's a lot harder in the social media space because like, I think we were talking earlier, it's like guys can throw a little piece of gel on their hair, wipe their face, throw on a shirt, and we're out the door. Mm -hmm. Like it's, there's a lot more pressure for a woman w from every angle, like oh, from being yes. a mom to being an entrepreneur, to being an educator, to starting life again after COVID. I yeah. mean, kind of touch on that. Cause I think that's a very wow. important part that a lot of people kind of take for granted. It, it's very difficult. It is challenging. It's challenging to, Oh, I can't even, 
kind of generate the, the process of because it's a standard. If you look like crap, you're going to have to look like crap forever. <laughs> the minute you make a change, it's expect an audience to start asking you questions or expect is anybody out, you know, literally your family is like, oh, why are you doing that? What's going on? You know, what changes are happening in your life? But it's, it's something that's important for women. Uh, like I mentioned, I was welding 24 seven, 24. I literally look like a football player, <laughs> you know, black everywhere, dusty everywhere. I look awful. But little by little started cleaning that up because, hey, I had to show my artwork. I wasn't going to look like I just stole the work. So <laughs> literally I had to, okay, I had to be in a gallery cleaned up. But as women, it is very important because we, I mean, we're attracting people and not in any other disrespectful way, but, you know, we are visual yeah. individuals. And you want to see, okay, that woman is well-dressed. Okay, that woman's secure. I can have a conversation with her. I can have business conversation with her. She knows what she wants because how do I know she knows what she wants? She knows what she wanted to dress like. Mm-hmm. She, she handpicked, selected her entire wardrobe. That means she can make good choices. If you are not well-dressed, then you're like, whoa, your choices are going to be a little iffy because you don't know how to combine or how to you know, generate your outfit. That's going to really speak your persona, yeah. right? How we dress speaks of who we are, how we feel, and what we'll actually, you know, have, what production we're going to have. Yeah, the impact. And yes, and that's very important. But imagine having, as a woman, I'm not saying anybody else is less, having to think, okay, this is how I have to dress. Me, I'm speaking about myself. I always pick my outfit at night, mm-hmm. never in the morning. You wake up late. That's yeah, it. It throws off your whole day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. Like for a guy, I have like the same four shirts. I'm like, let's go. I'm out. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm thinking. Okay. And then, okay, the, the accessories I'm um, utilizing. Who am I representing today? Okay, I'm representing this boutique. Okay, okay. This Now, after I'm done, okay, uh, car. Everything else that has to turn on my car. Make sure I do 70 million things before I even turn on my car. Yeah. But it is very important because that's, this is it. Like, that's how you, you showcase yourself the entire day. You either make it or break it. Yeah. <laughs> I also feel like uh, a lot of times, a lot of people let their day get ruined. By, like, say, for example, you forget to put your coffee mug on, on the, the lid on top and it spills on you. And that just literally ruins the rest of your day. I, I feel like a lot of people let low level stuff affect oh, yeah. their day. Like, do you deal with it? Uh, you know what? No. And I have to be very, very. So, how do you get past that? Or how, how did you become. I just had to realize that, you know, there's only 24 hours and nobody's going to give them back to me. Going back to what I mentioned, Jordan Peterson, Mm -hmm. he states this all the time. It's life is short. You only have 24 hours. That's it. Don't waste them. Don't waste them because you're over here in a shitty mood because of whatever the stupidest thing ever. Right. Uh, Then you know what? That's not fair. It was only five minutes of your life. Yeah. And it robbed you. Literally. Yeah. And that's it. You decided to allow these five minutes that were so awful, you know, take over the 20 hours. Yeah. That's not fair. That's not fair at all for life. So always have that in mind. I always do. And there's times that if I do spill coffee on me, it's like, okay, let me spill more. That way I can actually make an impression. Like, leave there, all those. There was a time where I would, well, I, I still drop food on myself every time I eat. So it's like, it's kind of part of who I am, you know, sorry, Definitely. sorry. <laughs> but going to the, back to Jordan Peterson, uh, he, he just recently said a quote, like, uh, it's better to be a monster and be able to control it. I think that is one of the most profound things I ever heard because it's kind of like, you know what human beings are capable of. Oh, yeah. Every human being is capable of that at some point. If something were to happen catastrophic in their life. Oh, yeah. Human. We're human. It's mm-hmm. better to be a monster and be able to control it. I, I, I don't think there had been any, any truer words spoken because, I mean, for example, what happens if you go out in life and something happens where you have to defend yourself or something oh, like yeah. that? Like, you kind of need to be that person. Yeah. I'm from the train of thought where... I'll always give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Always. Like, I've always been that type of person. But I get what humans are capable of. Yeah. So I am always have a little bit of a guard of like, you know, I, I, we're very particular about who comes into the studio and stuff like that. So yeah. it's, it's a very interesting world we live in now. Um, let me ask you this. From your students' perspective, mm-hmm. what do they deal with? Like with social media, with like life that's going on? What, what do you see from their point of view? Wow, these poor things that we honestly bombard. They've gone through so much. But like I tell them, no excuse, you better get better. 
you better get better. It's to. like a nasty virus. Like I always tell them, it's like a nasty virus. You're only going to get stronger. They're like, oh, wait, you're calling us viruses? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just put a pin on that. No, and going back to what you were saying, having your guard up. I grew up in the ghetto. Yeah. There was no way we could afford a single gun. <laughs> Literally no. But it was that house was always, I mean, I had knives hidden everywhere. You never know. No AC, you had to have your windows open. You know, we lived in front of bars, like, wow. We had Hollywood Adventure every night. <laughs> it was something that your heart was constantly going and rushing. So knowing that I come from that background, I'm just like you. Yeah. I, never, I don't trust a soul out there, knowing that we're all human beings. And because we're human beings, we have, we have that chip that we could become monsters. Yeah. We are monsters. We're just kind of sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. And you saw it during COVID times. Yeah, yeah. And I saw it within, and I see it with the students. It's always these things that please ask questions. Like, I've learned so many things. This past, this school year, which just started, have three weeks, and I have about five students that have to manage life that you're going through and that I'm going through all together. These are what, what age? These are 17 years old. Wow. They're, they're young. They're 17, 16 year old that they have to be a mom and a dad. Wow. There's some that live in Reynosa. They're driving here to the valley. And I'm like, what? Wow. I'm complaining they're just adults. going up, uh, or, you know, down the street, uh, having to drive to work. I'm such a wuss. Yeah. <laughs> so I am constantly talking to myself with that, with that in mind. But they're, oh, no, I have to take care of my siblings because I don't have a mom or my mom left me scenarios like this or we don't have a dad i'm the only thing so i have to put gas come back take my brother sister to school uh and then pick up my mom or drop on my mom at work and then do all of these so much responsibility because their parents left off in yesteryear right mm -hmm. and that's not what there's a lot of them so as educators we need to be mindful that please like yes i understand you have to do the assignment but that the, honestly who cares? Yeah. Literally, who cares? Yeah. It, 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 okay, you creating that work of art or you create, doing that assignment is not going to change the world mm -hmm. because you trigger them, right? Yeah. It's get that work done and, and you come so aggressive for something that you're probably not even going to grade, let's be real. And that student bursts and turns into a monster. Yeah. And there you have a huge terrorist in the classroom because he's going crazy, threatening. You don't know what he's gone through. Also, and that was literally just like the last straw. Yeah, yeah. And also a lot of people learn differently. Like mm -hmm. I, I've only found out about myself like these these past uh, like six years. Like I'm a visual learner. I mm -hmm. need to listen to stuff. I can't write stuff down. I can't read stuff. I hate yeah. reading. But I think people need to understand how they learn. Oh, yeah. That's a huge thing. Like for, because if you don't learn how you learn, well, you're going to get frustrated. Oh, definitely. Like, and then your just, mind just turns off. Yeah, and then we're embracing lost. a new uh, generation of technology mm -hmm. that did not work out today. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I was just like, okay, we need to go back. I mean, I'm teaching them how to do, how to create a website, yeah. something that you learn how to do in college. I'm like, no, 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 let's, let's start making a website. Okay, this is a website, go in, guess what? It's blocked. There goes my, what in the heck? <laughs> this was an hour and a half planning and now it's, it's done. <laughs> I was like, okay, plan B, we got this. So I'm the, the one trying to keep cool. And they're like, oh, how can we unblock it? I was like, okay, who knows how to hack the system? Because we really have to. <laughs> but that was awful, right? A generation that is built on technology. Yeah. Now, even if that darn thing was not blocked today, not a lot of them would have gotten it. So how do you manage that? Okay, what is it that you know how to do? Right. right? I had students that were taggers. I mean, that's it. So what would I grade? Their clothing how they would just be tagging their clothing. Interesting. That's it. I told you to make an artwork. You did. Great. Let yeah. me see it. Oh, I drew this in the street. Okay. Uh, kind of just don't give me selection. Just show me the work. Yeah. I, I, that's it. <laughs> okay. Perfect. That looks fantastic because you need to know that everybody's different. We all learn differently just because they're not painting a canvas now doesn't right. mean they're not going to do it later on. I doubt that at the age of 17, you were thinking you were going to be here. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have to be mindful of that just kind of making sure that we tame uh the monster in us let me ask you this before we finish off the mm -hmm. podcast uh i've been asking a lot of existential questions and and it's going to sound weird but uh <laughs> do you believe in aliens and i'm gonna tell you why after yes i do so yeah and the reason why i i know there's life and we're not the only individuals there's uh in the outskirts of edinburgh 
you find so many random things that happen. And one of the times that we were driving, I was leaving from my grandmother's, which is out, honestly, in the wilderness of Edinburgh, uh, driving out of my grandmother's, my husband's with me, and then it's just like a two-way street. That's it, right? Driving, and then we see a huge light. We're like, okay, we're gonna die. This is it. I'm thinking it's a huge, huge uh, trailer. I don't know, something big is gonna hit us. And as I'm staring at it, I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm ready to go. Damn. Uh, that light just surpasses our car. I'm like, wait, wait, what? I turn my head, and then, of course, I see this white, huge ball that kind of diminishes and turns red, and huh. it just hovers in the side of you know, the, the area. When was this? <sighs> We're talking. It happens all the time in Edinburgh. Those of you that are out there see it. Uh, I see about it was a chunk of time, like 15 years ago. Wow. But it's, it's constant. It's not something, I don't drive that because now I'm a little older and I'm like, I know, I don't want to be driving <laughs> at eight o'clock, right? I go, wow. So, uh, and I saw it, I was like, wow. My husband said, you want to check it out? I'm like, uh, is that the way for you to get rid of me? Like, this is not going to happen. And that happens. Like, it's very consistent. You see type, these type of things in the outskirts of anywhere. Okay, so let me pose my question to you now. <clears throat> what if we were the only things that were alive if in this we were? universe. Yeah. It's like say for no, there's nothing out in outer space. There's mm -hmm. no other planet that has life. What if we are the only human things that will ever have in human existence ever? Wow. I think that's amazing at the same time, because then that means we've created, we evolutionized, uh, we become, we became our own, you know, our own challenge, mm -hmm. but that's, that's just as good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, I think it's a very lonely thing, but also it's a very special yeah. thing. It's like you're only going to get to have this experience That's it, one once. time. And it, you That's know it. what? Even if it's true. We still get to have true, you only that one chance. That one chance. <laughs> Please don't screw it up. I mean, make sure you make wise choices because we only have today. Yeah. Like literally today. Yeah. There's no tomorrow. There's tomorrow if we open up our eyes, but that's it. That's yeah, not guaranteed. <laughs> it isn't. Well, Tanya, uh, let us know one more time what's going on this weekend. Yes, Phoenix Gallery will be there, artists. We're going to have a great show, great event from 6 and on. <laughs> so we're out there. My artwork is, you can find my artwork in the Phoenix Gallery. You can find it in the Incubator. You can find it in Innovations Gallery. You can also find it in STC Pecan, uh, the B, B Building also showcasing my work. So my work is all over the Rio Grande Valley right awesome. now. Yes. That's awesome. So Tanya Viveros is where just the name you'll find. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Tanya, thank you very much. Thanks for coming on the session. See y'all later. Bye. Yes.